and then I got to also check out the Still I Rise album. Mm. That has some real gems on it. Yes, it did. That has some real, real gems. So that was released in 99. Mm -hmm. So after Pac's passing. Uh huh. Okay, why'd you guys decide to put that out? Well, um, that was a project that we was we, we was in the process of working on before he passed away. Obviously, we had a lot of songs together. And so some of those songs were, you know, teaching. We were in class. And some of those songs were, yo, this is dope we're going to use. So we didn't get to collectively pick the album together with Pac, obviously, or, or uh, Gaddafi. But, um... You know, we we always had that, that 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 was in the arsenal. You know what I mean? After Machiavelli, that was ready, that was ready to go. It was gonna be our debut. We was gonna do the album together. You know, Pac specifically said, I'm gonna be a member of the Outlaws. This is this is, you know, Machiavelli's my solo album, Outlaws the group album, and we're gonna do it like a full-fledged group. And we was already in the process of recording those songs. So it was kinda like, you know, thankfully, you know, a, a Fanny with her blessings kind of just let that be just a little late of something that was already going to drop. You know what I mean? And it was just a little late. But what label? It came out under Death Row. It came out of under partnership Death Row in the scope of Morrow. Yeah. Okay. So was it really under Death Row or Death Row just had well, the rights to some of the music? Well, it, it kind of, you know, Suge had say so. Okay. He did have say so. So what was that process? That's probably, you? that's the reason why we only had one single. Huh. Yeah. Meaning what? Baby Don't Cry. Because, you know, uh, Suge wanted some things and, and you know, we weren't in agreement with that. And so he was like, I'm, I'm shutting it down. What did Suge want? Uh, some things. Okay. And you guys weren't cool with it? Yeah. Put it, I'm going to be, you know, frank. We wasn't with it at all. Okay. And because of that, after the first single, the, the promotion stopped? Yeah. The budget stopped? Because Interscope, I think, didn't want to deal with him. You know, now nah, he's 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 upset, you know, and so it's like, uh, we, we're just gonna walk away from this. And it's a it's a platinum album, it's on its way to platinum. Baby don't cry. It's charting all over the place, you know what I mean? Um, and it just got shut down. We was ready to do the next single, and it just psh, that's it. Right. And you're, on, board. and you're on Baby Don't Cry. Mm -hmm. You're on the second verse. Yeah. Uh, Nobles on the third. Well, it, what's also interesting is the first song, Letter to the President, you start that off. Uh -huh. And that's such a very interesting song right now, especially. Crazy, huh? What's going on. Yeah, somebody DM'd me that, what I said, and you know what I mean, and asked me why I said that. You know, and it's because you could just go back through history and just see the same conditions, especially if you want to talk about police brutality, racism, you know, all of that stuff has been a part of American history pretty much since day one. So I'm not a genius because I said it ain't getting better. You know what I mean? You know, Pac, he's a genius, but it didn't take a genius for him to say, it's going to be some stuff you're going to see in the future that's going to make it hard for you to smile because that's fucking life. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's pretty much life. I feel you. And I just interviewed Craig Hodges. Mm. Are you familiar with his story? Not not in you know, I know the ball player. Well, let me let me tell you. Craig Hodges, who played with the Jordan Bulls, has two rings with the Bulls. The second time he won his championship, they went to go visit the White House. Now keep in mind, uh Craig, Craig Hodges grew up in a household in Chicago where his mom was like Angela Davis, essentially. Mm. You know, he would go to meetings. Uh, he would hand out pamphlets. You know, uh, voter suppression was a big topic in his house. His mom had a big afro, like, you know, very much a, a pro-black uh, household. So when he went to go to the White House to meet the president, he went in a daishiki and he wrote a handwritten letter to George H.W. Bush, Bush Sr. And after that letter was dropped off, he never played in the NBA ever again. And you get dropped by the Bulls. Right. 
and no team calls you? Not at all. Do you think that was a, in retaliation to that letter? Absolutely, man. And, and you know what's so funny about it is that as we sit here, it'll be like somebody pulling, you can't do Vlad TV tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, you can't do no more Vlad TV. And you'll be like, oh, man, look at my credentials, man. I done did 12 years of this. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a library of work. Get the fuck out of here. True story. We just interviewed him, and we'll, we'll cut to this little part here so people can see for themselves. He never played, coming off a championship. No so what, team, no team would just... No team would pick him up. And one, one guy from, I believe, the Supersonics basically told him, hey, man, brothers got to pay their bills, if you know what I mean. Meaning, like, you coming over here, I might be out of a job, so... It's like a... Precursor to the Kaepernick situation. It's exactly what that is. Wow. He never played again. And years later, Phil Jackson brought him in as an assistant coach with the Kobe Lakers, and he won two championship rings nice. on that side. Nice. So it was a nice ending Phil is to solid, that story. Man. Phil is the best, man. Yeah. Gotta yeah. love Phil, man. That's dope. Yeah, Phil didn't give but a But that's crazy that 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 story was suppressed, like you never heard that. Like, yeah, this is my first time hearing that story. Yeah, and you're you're into stories like this, obviously. absolutely, <laughs> and basketball. Right, you, you were know named I mean? after Malcolm X. Exactly. Hence your first name, Malcolm. Absolutely. Right. Just goes to show. I'm supposed to know this type. You're of supposed story. to know this kind of thing. That's right. <laughs> and yeah. I didn't know that story, but that's you know, that's that's crazy. This is a true story. He never played for the NBA again, all because of a letter to the president. Which he you, wrote a which letter guys, to the president. Which you guys wrapped. That must about. have been a hell of a letter. Yeah. That must have been it was a, a handwritten letter. letter at that. And handwritten at that. Yeah, and you can't hand a letter directly to the president, right, when you're at the White House. So he gave it to like one of his aides, uh -huh. and they assured him. And he said that when he met with George Bush and said, "Hey, I wrote you a letter," and he said that Bush was very friendly. Oh, really? Okay. You know, okay. I look forward to reading it. Well, thank you. You know, he he was very he was very cool about it. So tell me he talks about the what what the letter. It basically was about the well, I'm supposed to get a copy of the letter actually. Okay. <laughs> I I haven't read it yet. All right. I was, so I'll he, be watching. He, he's supposed to send me a copy, so you know, we'll yeah. uh we'll, we'll show some, yeah. some extra stuff. It'd be from interesting it. to see what that letter said. Yeah. Yeah, but a but very, very uh true story. And this is actually the guy that tried to push Jordan to uh basically not renew his deal with Nike because at the time they were playing, his Nike deal was coming to an end. And uh -huh. he said, you're big enough where you don't need Nike anymore. You could build factories in Chicago and employ black kids and start factories in, in North Carolina and so forth. Jordan wasn't trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. That's what the Republicans buy sneakers too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Jordan got a right to feel that way, man. I, 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 I really... You know, um, I know a lot of people, especially under the umbrella that I sit under, would feel like Jordan is supposed to do something. He doesn't have the right to do anything. He's he's in business. This is business. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't he doesn't have to set up a factory in Chicago. You don't have Even to though up, millions of black kids buy his sneakers, he doesn't have to do that. You, you don't have to set up a factory in Chicago and go through all the the, the work behind starting your own company. And, and nobody even could like imagine that. what it would take to do that. Right. You don't have to do that. You don't have to donate millions of dollars. But you have situations where there was a black candidate that, that was running against Jesse Helms in North Carolina mm -hmm. who is an established racist. And... Jordan's own mother said, hey, just take a picture with the candidate to show some level of support, and Jordan would not do that. Something that, right. co something that cost him nothing. Absolutely. Except maybe a sponsorship later on. You and I probably would do it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Jordan's a different animal. Yeah. That's why he's Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? In more ways than one. And you glad, and I'm easy. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know. I just, you know, I, at this age of my life, that's how I look at things. You know, if you have expectations, you'll always be disappointed, especially with humans. 
Humans are going to disappoint you every time if you have expectations. And people had expectations of Jordan. And that's why I'm glad this came out because you get to see the good, the bad, the ugly. You know what I mean? You could kind of just, like he was Superman to us. And so now we see Michael Jordan is really a human being. You know what I mean? He's great at what he do. He got some fucked up shit about him, just like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Call his teammates hoes and bitches. You know what I mean? Like that, <laughs> come on, man. And it's, and you know, that's that testosterone. It's a guy sport. Like we was, we was about, about as bad as that or worse than that in the studio. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Pac was relentless. Yeah. 